Hello and welcome to my video on quadratic equations. In this video we're going to be doing the general proof of concept for factorization of ax squared plus bx plus c equals naught. And the whole idea is that we find two numbers such that when you add them together you get b and when you multiply them together you get ac. So two numbers u and v such that u plus v equals b and uv equals ac. So this is the underlying assumptions that we're making. This is the factorization method that we're using. And now we're going to prove that it will work no matter what. No matter what a, b and c are at the start in the equation. This method will always work, guaranteed. Okay, so if you remember in some previous videos, you should know already that the sum of the roots is minus b over a. These are facts, we've already proved these and the product of the roots is c over a. So it doesn't matter about the method of factorization or anything like that. This holds anyway, okay? This is a lot easier to prove, okay? But they're actually all interlinked. One implies the other, okay? This wouldn't work, this method would never work if this wasn't true. Likewise, this wouldn't be true if this method didn't work so it's all one implies the other but we still have to prove it okay and some assumptions what well, we've already outlined over here but I'll just write them in this blue box uh, so u plus v equals b and uv equals ac so if we rearrange that we also have u over a equals c over v you get that from the second one if you just rearrange that you get that Likewise, v over a is equal to c over u. So these two equations will become useful later on in the proof. Okay. Now, somewhere in the proof, we're going to have to use these assumptions, yeah? And then what eventually will happen is it'll come out in the wash and it'll basically, it'll boil down to the fact that the sum of the roots is minus b over a, product of the roots is c over a. So while we're going through all of this, with these assumptions, right? If we can show that the sum of the roots is minus b over a, product of the roots c over a, in the general setting, then we're done. And that proves that the factorization method works. Okay, so let's give it a try. So let's start with the original equation again. So ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So what we're going to do now is I am going to split B up using our two numbers, U and V. So we don't know what they are. We don't need to know what they are, okay? So we will find them. In, if we're given an example and we're told to factorize it, U and V will be pretty easy to find. For example, if, it was, if the sum was 5, and the product was 6, then u and v would be 2 and 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, but as I say, we don't need to know any specific numbers because we're, we're proving it in the general setting. Right. So actually, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to make this a wee bit simpler for myself. Let's divide across by a. So far, so good. I haven't done anything illegal. In the first step, I just split B up into U plus V. Exactly what our assumptions, and that's the whole plan. That's part of the method. And then, normally we wouldn't divide across by A in real, in real examples, but I'm doing it here just to prove the general case, to make the algebra easier. Okay, so when we do that, we get that. And now I want to try and factorize this. So let's start. Let's put x outside and then we have x plus u over a. And then if this factorization method works, that means we're going to have this factor here. This is now a factor. That means that's going to be over here multiplied by something to give us this. 
The only problem is this involves u, this involves v. Ah, but hold on a minute. We can we can soon sort that out. We can we can make that involve u. How do we do that? Well, v over a we can change that. If we look over here, u v equals a c. So v over a is equal to c over u. So that's what we're going to do. And as I say, that's one of their assumptions. So we have to use that at some point. And we're going to be using it here. So let's change that. So v over a is equal to c over u times x plus c over a. Great. So now we can actually incorporate this in with this, okay, to factorize it. So let's go and do that. So what will that be? Well, to make it easier, I'll just write this down first. Okay, so to get c over ux, we just multiply this by c over u. And then we get that for free. c over u times u over a, with the u's cancelled, we'll just get c over a. Great. So we're pretty much done. Just combine the factors together. That's it. We've factorized it. So we find our two factors. One of them is in terms of C and U, and the other is in terms of U and A. Now we could actually get them, we could change this one, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So X plus C over U, if you look over here, C over U is equal to V over A. So I'm going to, I'm going to swap them back again. In fact, well, hold on, we don't really need to, but hold on, but yeah, we'll do that in a minute anyway. Let's uh, let's write the, let's write the answers down first. Okay, so x is equal to minus c over u, and minus u over a. So these are the answers. Okay, these are the roots. So if this factorization method is true right this whole idea of taking two numbers whose product is ac and whose sum is b then that means that these roots have to obey this principle here they have to agree with this so their sum has to be minus b over a and their product has to be c over a if that's true then we're basically done Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to show that the sum of these is minus b over a, and the product of these is c over a. Well, I'll do the product first, because that's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm sure you can see that already, the u's cancel. Um, so let's uh, write the roots down again. So we've got minus c over u and minus u over a. And then what I'll do is I'll work up here. Okay, so these, so, so these are the roots. So uh, the product of the roots, my curly P there, is equal to, well, these U's, as I say, cancel, and then the minuses, minus times minus is plus. So that is just C over A. So that's done. Okay, and the last thing we need to do now is prove that the sum of the roots is minus B over A. If the sum of the roots is not minus b over a, if we can't show that here, if that doesn't work, then the whole thing falls apart. Then the whole thing's nonsense. Okay, so drum roll, please. This is the moment of truth. Now, the sum of the roots is a little bit trickier to show with these two roots. Now, we want to end up with minus b over a. So a is on the denominator. So we want an a on our denominator. And one of the roots already has an a in the denominator. So we've got a minus u over a in the denominator here. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the minus c over u. Try and get that in the form of something over a. So let's do that. 
but I'll write them down first. So, so minus C over U. And then it's plus minus U over A. So it's minus U over A. Right? And then what I'll do is I'm going to change the C over U to something over A. Oh, let's go back over here. There you go. We can change C over U to V over A. So let's go and do that. So that's equal to minus V over A minus U over A. Right? And then we'll take the minus outside and we get V plus U over A. This is looking very promising. And then what, what can we do with this? Well, we know that V plus U, which is the same as U plus V, just the other way around. Well, look, we know that that is B. U plus V is B. So there we go, we're done. Just plug that in, change V plus U to B. So that's it. We've proved that this method of factorization where you take two numbers, U and V, whose sum is V, whose product is AC, you use that, you do your algebra, you do all that, and you'll always find the roots of any quadratic equation you want. Why? Why does it work? Well, we've just proved that the product of the roots, no matter what A, B, and C are, the product of the roots always come out to C and A. The sum of the roots always come out to minus B over A. Okay? Based on this method. One of the heavy assumptions we made was that UV equals AC, and we use the, these facts here. We just change the equation slightly so that it looks like that to help us in the algebra. And then obviously we use the fact that U plus V equals B as well to finish off the last step in the proof for the sum of the roots. Okay, guys. So that's that done. Now, I want to show you something really cool about this as well. So... This is what I was going to do earlier, but I decided to wait. So you notice that these two roots are minus C over U and minus U over A. Well, what I'm going to do is I'll keep the minus C over U just now. So let's go over here. So one of the roots is minus C over U. And what was the other one? The other one was minus U over A. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that. So minus U over A, we can change that into something involving C. So u over a is equal to c over v. So minus u over a is minus c over v. So the other root is minus c over v. Now the reason I've done that, let me show you, it's very, very cool. So these are our two roots in any situation. Minus c over u and minus c over v. Why have I done that? Well, I've done that because we're splitting b up into u plus v. So B is getting split up into U and V. So the first line of any of these problems, when we're solving these factorization problems, the very first line we write down is when we split up B into U and V. So let's suppose B was 5. So we had 5x. So we split it into 2x plus 3x. Right? Okay. So we know U and V already So in that example. So that would be 2 and 3. So the reason I've written the roots like this is because before we even finish the problem, we can write down the roots very, very quickly, right? Because we know U and V. We already knew C because it's given in the question. And then we know U and V. U plus V is just B, right? And in fact, we could even change this slightly. But I'm, I'm just going to leave it. Don't worry about that. Just, just leave it like that for now, right? So let's suppose we had that example again, x squared plus 5x plus 6. So something that multiplies together to give us 6, adds together to give us 5, is 2 and 3. So I would write this down like this. Right? And then, obviously, I'm going to finish off the factorization in, in an exam or whatever. You know, I'll, I'll do the rest of it. However, already, just now that I know what U and V are, so U and V equals 2 and 3. U can be 2 or 3, V can be 2. You can take your pick. I'll let U equal 2 and V equal 3. It doesn't really matter. Right. 
and I'll show you why in a second why it doesn't matter. Right. So I can write the answer down immediately. If, if, if a question asks me to find the roots, you can get the roots right now. Okay, because one of them is minus C over U and the other is minus C over V. So what's C? C6. So minus C is minus 6, isn't it? So the roots, and I don't even need to finish off the factorization and all that. I can write, I can write them straight down. So the roots will be minus 6 over u, which is 2, and minus 6 over v, which is 3. So the roots will be minus 3 and minus 2. Okay, the product of these roots is 6, which is c over a, which is 6 over 1, that checks out. The sum of the roots is minus 3, minus 2, which is minus 5, which is minus b over a, and b over a is 5, so minus b over a is minus 5, so that checks out as well. But anyway, guys, the reason I wanted to show you all this is because once you have u and v, you can write down those roots immediately. Because all you need to do is you take minus c, divide it by u, and then minus c and divide it by v. And you can pick u to be 2 or u to be 3, whatever you like. I just think that's, that's amazing. That's beautiful. I, I really, really like that. Okay. And if you wanted to even go one step further, but you don't really need to, you could say, well, you could change V to B minus U. So whatever V is, subtract U from it. So once you've got one number, let's suppose, so B is five, right? So once you, once you decide on one of the numbers, so two, so use two, yeah? So if we have say minus C over U, and minus c over b minus u then once we work out one of them so let's suppose u is 2 then the other one is obviously going to be b minus u which is 5 minus 2 which is 3 right but you don't need to go go that far you can leave it like this you can leave it as minus c over u and minus c over v i'm going to leave it like this okay so in any of these problems your roots will be minus c over u and minus c over v. So those numbers u and v are very important. And you've got them by splitting up v. Sorry, by splitting up b, sorry. So they're very, very important and it allows you to write the roots down immediately without having to go through the whole solving the problem, factorizing it to the very end. But anyway, it's important to show working out. It's important to, to try and prove these things. Okay. So when you're tackling factorization problems, just make sure that their product is equal to AC, U and V. Once you, I mean, splitting V up, you could split V up whatever way you like. Suppose B was 100. Suppose B was 100, so you had 100X there. You could split that up in many, many ways. Well, I think it's 100 ways, isn't it? or 99 ways, whatever. So you could have like, you could have like x plus 99x, 2x plus 98x, 3x plus 97x, and so on. I won't bore you with all 100. So you could have it whatever way you want, but the important thing is it also has to satisfy the product condition. So the two numbers have to multiply to give you AC. Okay? Otherwise it won't work. Otherwise you won't be able to factorize it. You'll get you'll run into a dead end and it'll, it'll just be nonsense. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, share, and I'll see you on the next video.